All right, well, I got to start somewhere, so this is going to be a video on how I came to own my Lotus Elan. And uh, it all starts with the first time that you ever saw the car. And for me, that would be here. Now, I'm not, this is not the exact advertisement that I saw it from, uh, from but uh, it is the type of advertisement. It is a Goodyear tire advertisement. And, uh, of course, it had three red cars on it. may have had a couple others on the original one that I saw. And uh, this is a Ferrari. This is a Corvette. And this is an Elan. And, uh, personally, I don't like red. So, that doesn't look good. That doesn't look good. But I was like, hey, now, there's a red car that actually looks fairly decent. So, this red car right here caught my eye. And it kind of, you know, you read through the article and you realize this is a Lotus. And I had no idea that Lotus was producing something like this at the time. So I began to do a little bit of research on it. And research will take you into all kinds of stuff, like here's a DuPont registry. Um, there's other stuff, maybe you've got an auto week or something like that. A little lawn right there. But uh, ultimately you have to decide whether or not you're going to be able to do it. And uh, at the time that I first saw the car, they were 40 grand, and uh, 40 grand was out of my price range. And I just could not do that. So I waited and waited and waited and waited, and eventually it came to uh, my attention that they were beginning to try and just move these things out toward the end of the year. And the prices were dropping and dropping and dropping, and I began to negotiate with a couple of dealers. Uh, I think one of them was down around New York City. One was out in Cincinnati, Ohio, and one, the one I ultimately purchased from, was in, uh, uh, what is it, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, believe it or not. There was one in Syracuse, New York, and I lived in Syracuse, New York at the time, but uh, yeah, they weren't willing to deal with me at a price that I felt was reasonable. So, uh, I began to, as I said, negotiate, and we settled on a price. So this, uh, back in the day, we did things with faxes. So this is a fax that they sent me. And uh, anyway, it's got the date. This is roughly the time, December 19th, almost exactly 29 years ago, that uh, I put my money down. So this is part of the money down. And they sent me this little piece right here. And this is my, if you can see it, 500 bucks right there. Uh, down on deposit. And uh, here's another one. This is our agreed upon price, $30,081. So this is roughly $10,000 off of the, you know, the, the sticker price. And uh, so we've got a date, 12-20-1991. That's when I agreed to buy the car. This is not, however, when I bought the car. Uh, let's see, what do we got? More memorabilia. We've got the 12-19-92, my 500 bucks down. So I've got that, but uh, at some point I've got to go get the car, and i got to come up with a way of paying for it, and I didn't actually want to make payments. Um, because I, was, I was young, had a decent job, and uh, this is very important if you're a young person. I had no women in my life, because women are ungodly expensive, and you will accomplish not a whole heck of a lot if you're dating or wasting your money on women. I had one of my cohorts who used to love to go to the strip joints. Who knows what happened to his money, but it never went into anything productive near as I could tell. But I decided to do a cashier's check. 29600 bucks. And anyway, I had my bank in Georgia at the time because that's where I was before I got to Syracuse. And I took my cashier's check and on, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, December 28th, 1991, I went down to Valley Chevrolet in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, which is just off of Interstate 81, I mean, I mean, just right off the exit, and bought my car. And uh, it's my 500 bucks down, $30,114 with a couple of extras. Uh, see, we got some taxes, we got uh, 20 bucks or something else, and $81 for Luxury tax. What else we got in here? Anything interesting? 
Uh, more Valley Chevrolet stuff. Again, $30,114.10. It's also got the date, 12-28. Uh, luxury tax, $8.10. There's my odometer statement. Apparently the one that I picked up had $20, uh, sorry, 20 miles on it originally. What else have I got? Temporary tags. Okay, temporary tag. 12-28-1991. Good for one month. I didn't actually pick the car up until February. So, my temporary tag, I'm not entirely sure what we did, but that temporary tag was useless. In February, somewhere around Valentine's Day in February of 1992, I went down and picked it up. From Lotus Cars USA in Lawrenceville, Georgia. So I went to the Lawrenceville, Georgia facility. I mean, this was all of Lotus that was down there. Anyway, the day I went there, in one section of the warehouse, they had their entire three-car Esprit racing team and uh, had some mechanics doing some stuff. So I got to wander around and look at uh, all the stuff that they had over there. And, uh, of course, they had a whole bunch of Elans. Elans. Some of them under tarps and some of them out. And they were prepping my car at the time. Uh, of course, at the time, they were also selling Esprits. And I went to go wander around and uh, looked at a couple of Esprits. Probably sat in one or two of them. And then the guy says, and let me get the guy out. Here's the card. Okay, this is Arnie Johnson. He's the guy who used to be like uh, a chief down there. Says Vice President Technical Services. Anyway, this is the guy I got to wander around with. And a uh, real nice guy. I don't think he works there anymore. I think say it's just 30 years ago, and the guy was probably, uh, who knows, 60 at the time. So he'd be an old dude now. But anyway, that guy said, hey, we got one more really cool thing back around the corner over here. And we go around the corner, and I don't know, you guys don't remember at the time, but at the time, Bugatti and Lotus were kind of tied together. And around the corner, the guy takes the tarp off, and there is a who the heck knows how much, a quarter million dollar Bugatti EB110. And he pops open the door and says, go ahead and jump in there and sit down, Scott. So when I went to pick up my Lotus, because I went down, rather than picking it up at the dealer, because I went down to Lawrenceville, went to the place, I got to sit in the Bugatti EB110. So that was really cool. And uh, anyway, my dad went with me to pick up the car. And I did not have a camera at the time, and I know my dad took some photos. None of those photos have survived. Um, my mom passed away, uh, geez, seven years ago. My dad about three years ago. Uh, I think that's right. No, six years and three years ago. Anyway, their entire collection of photos, which would have contained some of the stuff that I had. So there should have been a Lotus picture or two in there from when I bought the car. They're gone. I've got nothing from when I bought the car. So, that clears that out. And uh, I've got more stuff, but I think that's good enough. That's just a good intro for right now. Yeah. I'll get more for you later.